Hey everybody, Teach It Serious Gas. Welcome back. Today we're going to look at my favorite seven percussion tools. These are things that I use in the studio and live in concert, and they sound great. They help bring the music to life in many unique ways. Some bright with high frequencies, some more mid-range, but all of them extremely useful. Let's take a look. So first up is the tambourine, and this is my Rhythm Tech tambourine. Notice how it's shaped. You can hold it in the middle. You can play it this way, and it deadens these a little bit more so you get more of a staccato sound. As opposed to the more sustained. Now besides this one, I also have in the studio a very versatile tambourine. This one has a skin. You can get tambourines with or without skins. Notice it's also completely round. I can tune this skin because these I can tighten or loosen to get exactly the type of tone I want behind the song that I'm playing. I can also mute by touching the skin as much of the overtones and main tones as I want. So we can play it like this fully open. by touching the skin I can get rid of a lot of that tone or somewhere in the middle as I loosen or push I can also play it like a drum sounds like the beginning to Africa <laughs> so you can get a lot of different tones out of this a lot of different uses but it's still just a tambourine. Very, very useful. Next up, we got the claves. And they have a sharp, almost snare-like sound. So if you've got music, maybe Latin music, where you don't have a drum kit, but you want to emphasize two and four, that would certainly do it. Or maybe you want to emphasize and accent a certain consistent rhythm behind a lot of soloing instruments especially soloing rhythmic instruments. Um, this could do that for you. Merengue, samba, mambo, whatever you want to have. It also can change sound a bit depending on how you hold it. If I really grip them and wrap my hand around them, it's a little bit more dead. If I keep them at my fingertips, they ring a little longer and you get a little bit more of an aftertone. And check this out. I discovered my own different sounding clave when a mallet in my garage broke. Check this sound out. It sounds really great like a clave sound only with a deeper projecting tone. All from a mallet that broke. Anything could be music. Next up, your favorite, I'm sure, Crown Royale. Oh, actually, no, sorry. This is just the Crown Royale bag, which I keep my egg shakers in. <laughs> yeah. So these egg shakers have handles, so I can put them in between my fingers, like that. And I can actually hold the drumstick and play drums. For example, if I hold it in my snare hand, I can be on the hi-hat. So this sounds with my snare sound. Nice little addition if you want it. Or you can play them live as I have just like this, and they're just easier to hold on to, right? They don't slip out of your hands at all. Now you got the normal shakers too. Notice how if I hold it lengthwise or widthwise, it gets a slightly different sound. A little higher frequencies there. Another egg, slightly different frequencies. And from my youngest son's arsenal of toys, three shakers, each with their own different lighter sound. 
This one's my favorite. Very high frequency. And uh, after you finish playing a nice gig with those shakers, enjoy a drink on me. <laughs> also, I can't forget to show you the LP shaker. Um, it really is two shakers with rubber bands holding them together. I use the shaker a lot in the studio and live. It's really awesome. It's the best shaker I have, and I wouldn't get rid of it. No how, no way. Two very different shaker sounds. First, I'm going to do it so that it's wide in my hand. Now, if I hold it lengthwise, you get a lot more sand. You get a lot more sustain and whizzling around of that sand in there. So it depends on what you want for the song. Which one works best? Which one complements the song better? Maybe somewhere in between holding it at a diagonal. I do that sometimes. So three very different sounds. All extremely usable and complement so many songs that I've recorded in my studio. I'm sure it can in yours too. The LP professional studio shaker. Yeah. Next, the Yaritos pop bottle. I got it because I was thirsty one day, finished off the pop, and lo and behold, I found that this bottle makes a great percussive sound. So, first I'm going to use a hard rubber mallet, and it makes this sound. By the way, I like to hold it from the top. It gets better sustain and a clearer tone if I do that. The shoulder of the bottle is what I use most, although down here it also gives more of a staccato and high frequency pitch. Next, I'll use a wooden mallet to get a slightly different sound. Next, I sometimes use a brass mallet that I typically have on the glockenspiel, but it makes an even sharper sound. A lot more power. And finally, if I want to maximize the Yarito sound, I use this steel rod. Very strong, very thick and it could break the bottle, so I don't play too hard. <laughs> but yeah, anything you find can be percussion. That's the beauty of it. Put it on a mic, give it a try. It might just complement your song in an awesome way. You never know till you try. So go for it. Yaritos! Okay, so I've lowered the camera a bit so you can see that I keep my triangles on a banana stand. <laughs> If you get inventive and creative, you never know what cool thing you can come up with. So this is what I hang them on if I'm playing percussion uh, during a concert, so I can quickly get to them. Um, typically, they only, I only have one usually hanging. If I do have them both, I have to be careful that I reach for one, draw it out, and then remove it. Otherwise, they'll clang together. But let's just take off the larger one. And the best way to play the triangle is you're going to place one finger through the loop. This is just a piece of yarn or string. I use yarn, a little thick yarn. Place a finger through there. Now I've got just a little bit of room between the triangle and my finger. So I can let it hang and let it sustain if I want. Or, I can grab the triangle for a more percussive staccato sound. I have two beaters, and one is very thick. It's a thick steel rod, and the other is a very thin steel rod. So each of these is going to sound different. Let's use the very thin one to start with. And if I keep my hand on it, clenching it, cutting off the sustain, then it has a staccato, softer sound. 
If I open my hand, I can get accents similar to what you get when you open your hi-hat on a kit. All that's from just opening and clenching. Now if I use the thicker rod, then, whoa, <laughs> you get a lot more overtones. Clenching, release, clench, release, all sorts of different sounds. Now, if we take the second smaller triangle, I probably use this more, especially in the studio setting. It's just a little more subtle. So again, I have a loop. Place my hand through it there, and typically I have to double loop this one because it's a little bit longer. So, I can hit it, and right now I have it muted with my fingers. I can open for some sustain. Cutting off the sound with the clench, letting it sustain by opening the fingers. Very fun. Doesn't become appropriate really for lots of songs, but uh, any of you that have listened to Peter Gabriel know that triangle can really accent a song beautifully. I believe he used that on the song Mercy Street on the Great So album. Take a listen and you'll see what I mean. The triangle, an awesome percussive instrument. The cabasa, a staple in Latin rhythm playing, but hey, you don't have to use it just for Latin music. Any percussive piece you can use for anything, right? So, if you slide these, it makes a grating sound against the aluminum steel balls against aluminum, or if I just hit in my hand, it gives a slight tuck that is also good, and when you combine them, you get two different sounds there, and the slide, if I just do that, leaving it open, it's a, probably too much sustain usually, although there's probably a song where that would sound good. But usually, or any other rhythmic combination you can think of. Triplets, whatever you want to do. The kibasa can be very interesting behind the main groove. And uh, you can get one pretty much at any, any store. So this is a Meinl that I use, but kibasa is a kibasa. They're going to have slightly different uh, frequency variations, but they all kind of give that high frequency chick, and that's what makes them special. So there you go, my top seven. Now there's many, many other types of percussion you can play. I've got a guiro here. I didn't mention that at all, because it's typically Latin. I've got... Yeah, you know Christmas just happened. You know you were thinking of the sleigh bells. I've got all kinds of cymbals. And not the kind that you use for your drums, but the kind that you use more for ear candy. As well as kinds that you put on your thumbs. Ever been a hula dancer? You know what I'm talking about. We got castanets from my youngest son's playthings. They sound great. And don't forget the goat toes. Oh yeah, goat toes rock. The spoons. Yeehaw, never gets old. And even the Benoit balls. Want to do some new age music? Record these, the subtle ringing that they do. Pan them left and right, and you'll be having people snooze or meditate in no time. <laughs> There's lots more. Heck, I've even got a Subway cup that I found that if I strike with my nail at the bottom, makes a great snare sound. So I often put that sound along with a real snare, livens it up, man. It sounds killer. If 
I do it with my hand, it's not nearly as good. It gives a lot more mid-range, but if I just use my nail, great snare sound. Everything is music, you know what I'm saying? All right, we'll see you for the next video. Until then, this is Teach from Serious Gas saying, go make sound.